this took me like 30 years to figure out and I figured it out on this tour. You're more than you think you are. And that's extremely helpful to people, especially people who are struggling because they think, oh my God, life is so difficult. I don't know if I can stand this. There must be something wrong with me. Does anybody else feel this way? And you can say, yes, everyone feels that way at some time, but that's, and, and, and it is as bad as you think, but you're more than you think you are. And the thing that's cool about that is all the clinical evidence shows it works. And not only that, that's actually how you learn in life. If you're sufficiently um, courageous and forthright and honest, let's say, in your approach, and you don't shy away, yeah. what you'll find is that there's something within you that will respond to the challenge of suffering with the development of ability that will transcend the suffering. So the pessimism is, yeah, well, life is rife with problems every, at every level. But the upside is, if you turn and confront that voluntarily, that you'll find something in yourself that can develop and master that. And so the, the, the optimism is nested in the pessimism. If, if people are afraid of something, afraid of something that's standing in their way as an obstacle, like maybe you're trying to develop your career and you're afraid of public speaking. Well, I could try to calm you down about your fear and, and protect you from the challenge that would be associated with public speaking and say, well, you never have to do that. Or I could say, no, no, look, you have to learn to present yourself more effectively in public if you're going to develop your career and you're afraid of it. Mm -hmm. So let's break down what you're afraid of in, into 10 steps or 20 steps until we can find a step that's small enough so that you can actually master it. And let's assume that with three years of diligent practice that you could become a competent public speaker, at least one that isn't terrified. And with five years, you could become an expert. And let's decide how relevant that is to your future prosperity and thriving. And then let's assume that if you break it down properly and take it on step by step in this incremental way that we discussed, that you'll actually master every single bit of it. If you can read and think and, and communicate, you are absolutely 100% unstoppable. And that's another thing that's so interesting about the humanities education that's at the core of the university. It's like, there's nothing more economically valuable than teaching people how to articulate themselves and communicate because they can identify problems, they can formulate solutions, they can negotiate to consensus, they, they can negotiate on their own behalf or on the behalf of others. It's like, there's absolutely no downside to it, except that there's responsibility that goes along with it, but it doesn't matter because there's no escape from responsibility. You can either take it voluntarily or you can take it involuntarily. Those are your options, but there aren't any other options. You know, if you set out a path towards a goal, which you want to do because you need a goal and you need a path because mm -hmm. that provides you with positive emotion, right? So you, you set up something as valuable. So that implies a hierarchy. You set up something as valuable. You decide that you're going to do that instead of other things. So that's kind of a sacrifice because you're sacrificing everything else to pursue that. And then you experience a fair bit of positive emotion and meaning as you watch yourself move towards the goal. And so the implication of that is the the better the goal, the the, the more full and rich your experience is going to be when you pursue it. What you'll find is that as you move towards the goal, there are certain things that, that, that you have to accomplish that frighten you. You know, maybe you have to learn to be a better speaker, a better writer, a better thinker. Or you have to be better to people around you, or you have to learn some new skills and you're afraid of that, whatever. Cause it's gonna stretch you if you, if you pursue a goal. And, it's, and so that'll put you up against challenges. Why do you want to challenge? Cause that's what you're built for. That's what you're built for. You're built to take on a maximal load. Right? Because that's what strengthens you and you need to be strong because life is extraordinarily difficult and because the evil king is always whittling away at the structure of the state and you have to be awake and sharp to stop that from happening so that you don't become corrupt and so that your family doesn't become corrupt and so that your state doesn't have to become corrupt. You have to have your eyes open and your wits sharp and your words at the ready and you have to be educated and you have to know about your history and you have to know how to think and you have to know how to read and you have to know how to speak and you have to know how to aim, and you have to be willing to hoist the troubles of the world up on your shoulders, despite the fact that life is a tragedy tainted by malevolence. At every level of existence, there's something about the human spirit that can thrive under precisely those conditions if we allow that to occur, because as difficult as life is and as horrible as we are, our capacity to deal with that catastrophe and to transcend that malevolent spirit is more powerful than, the, than that reality itself. And that's the fundamental issue. As catastrophic as life is, and as malevolent as people can be, and that's malevolent beyond belief, fundamentally. The, a person has in spirit the nobility to set that right and to defeat evil. And that, and that more than that, and that 
The antidote to the catastrophe of life and the suffering of life and the tragedy of life that can drive you down and destroy you is to take on exactly that responsibility and to say, well, there's plenty of work to be done and isn't that terrible. And there isn't anything so bad that we can't make it worse and certainly try very hard to do so. But I have it within me to decide that I'm going to stand up against that. I'm going to strive to make the world a better place. I'm going to strive to constrain the malevolence that's in my own heart and to set my family straight and to work despite my tragic lot for the betterment of anything, of everything that's in front of me. And the, as soon as you make that decision, then all the catastrophe justifies itself in the nobility of your striving. And that's what it means to be an individual.